Hello everybody, I'm working on an 87 F-150 two-wheel drive with the 300 straight six, four-speed Borg Warner transmission. And we are doing the slave cylinder today. You can see that the engine, the 300 straight six, is out of this truck because we just did that. And now we are moving on to some other clutch-related issues before we reinstall the engine. And you can see the slave cylinder right here and it is uh, on this bracket. And there's your lever that controls the throw out bearing. The slave cylinder pushes this and the release bearing is moved. So that's how it's working. Uh, this uh, slave cylinder is missing a few pieces that came off. There is a boot that goes over this with a little piston or plunger, I guess you could call it. And that is actually right here. So this uh, fell out of that slave cylinder and it is no good to put it back on. So we bought another slave cylinder at Napa and we are ready to put it back on. So I'm gonna take these two bolts off first. We're gonna drop the bracket down and we're gonna remove the slave cylinder where it's connected, put it back in. take this last bolt out and then we're going to pick the slave cylinder up and we're going to bring it up through the engine compartment since we have the space we'll be able to look at it better up there show you what's going on we brought the slave cylinder up through to the engine compartment and you can get a good look at it now here's the new one i bench bled this one before we we're going to install it now to do that you can just pump this add fluid and let it suck fluid into itself and kind of bench bleed out most of the air before you install it. That'll help you. Um, although once we get it in there, we're gonna let it hang and we're gonna let fluid come out of the hole to also bleed the air. So to get the slave cylinder off, this is like a clip, it's like a retaining clip. It's made out of some kind of plastic or whatever, but you can just pop that out of the way like this. Then this one comes right out Remember the orientation of the tabs? That's where these used to be. These are made to break. Do not cut them off the new one. So it went in just like that. Your hands are pretty oily. All right, so. Now you can see, looks the same. There is a small roll pin. The roll pin's right here. I'm gonna use a small punch, a small hammer to knock that roll pin to get it started. Sometimes they're pretty corroded. Once you get the pin out enough, you can probably grab it with some vice grips. There, get that out. Now we're gonna try to pop this line out. Oh, here we go. The so line is out. If we keep the line above the master cylinder, the clutch master cylinder, we'll be doing ourselves a favor and we won't be dealing with losing so much fluid. So I'm gonna clean this off as much as I can here. And I can put this down in here. The new slave cylinder came with a seal. And what I'm gonna have to do now is while I'm holding that down, I need to tap in the new roll pin. Here's the new roll pin. Try not to drop it, because it's gonna be very, very hard to find it again. It's 
started it with my little machinist hammer. Okay, seated all the way in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this hang down there like this. I'm gonna take an Allen wrench and I'm gonna back off this uh, screw, the set screw, and it's gonna allow fluid to come out. And with the fluid, air will come out. It'll fill this up and it'll bleed out some of the air. I'm gonna remove the cap to the master cylinder, which is back here by the power brake booster. You're gonna to wanna to watch the level of fluid in your reservoir while you do this. I got a can of DOT3 here, that's what it calls for on the cap. And you don't want that to run out because then you'll have air all through your line. So obviously it's much easier for me, I'm sitting in the engine compartment, but it'll be easier for you to see it. You'll have to do it laying under the vehicle if you have the engine out. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna loosen this right here. On this one, it's a 516, so I don't know what you're gonna have. Okay, you see how the fluid's now coming out of the side? That's what we wanna see. Remember, I bench bled this before I installed it. And like I was saying, how I did that was I would compress the piston and I would add fluid and let it suck the fluid in. So this was basically full before we started. However, by doing this, I'm allowing that to bleed and drain out a little bit. Once this is installed underneath, and I'm going to put it back under there in a second, and we have the engine back in this truck, then we're going to, if we need to, we'll bleed it using the pedal, just like you would bleed your brakes. I'm just torquing down the last bolt. And what I want to show you now is the plastic that I was talking about earlier. Those two plastic straps right there, that's made to break when you're using it. It's actually designed for those to pop off. And what it does is it leaves the cap on there. Right now, we don't have this under any kind of attention. But that ball, the plastic covering the ball, is kind of makes it like an anti-seize. So you don't have to grease that. That's just made to fit. So here we go, that's on there now. Of course, we have no throwout bearing or anything, so this kind of just in there loose. But that gives you an idea on how to change your slave cylinder on an older F-150 or F-250, F-350 with a Borg Warner transmission in the 300 straight six. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Keep these old trucks alive. Please share these videos and don't forget to subscribe below.